เดี๋ยวเราไปอยู่ตรงไหนนั่นรอเลยโค้งขุนโค้งที่มันข้างหน้าเนี่ย When I got into running, I just spent a year cycle touring in Southeast Asia. And one of the things that I quickly realized was this is what I want to do all day long. I want to wake up in the morning and do exactly what I love from morning to night until the sun goes down. And what that led to was my obsession with running and getting better at running. And that was 2010. And then I was like, okay, how can I maximize my abilities and try to reach my potential? I need to turn into a full-time gig, into a professional athlete. And that's essentially what I did. But something that really appealed to me, not just trying to reach my potential, was to live anywhere I wanted in the world that was most conducive of great training and becoming the fastest possible runner I could. And that led me to finding Granada in the south of Spain and realizing that I couldn't really find a better place than Granada to train, to train at medium and high altitude, to train in the mountains, to train technical on the roads, whatever it was, it, Granada has it and it was perfect for it. But it meant that I had to go there, find a little apartment, start to be able to find the find great routes, great off-road off trails. And this was before Strava and before you could kind of find a Strava heat map and just go for it. And then what that led to was, okay, if I can do this, I can find the best trails and find the best routes in Granada. I can do that again in Southeast Asia. And Chiang Mai was somewhere that I'd found whilst I was cycle touring. And I knew that it was perfect for cycling. And I thought it could, could be great for running as well. So I went to Chiang Mai as soon as it would get cool or cold and wet in Granada. So that October, November, as soon as there was bad forecast for a couple of weeks, I would just hop on a plane and go to Chiang Mai. What that's led to is eight months of the year in Granada, four months of the year in Chiang Mai. So swapping the, the, the mountains and forest of Granada for the jungle and the mountains in Chiang Mai. But what it's also done is I'm really good at finding the best possible place to live, whether it's in a city or a small town or a village, in order to, to run from my door, ideally, and cycle from my door as well. So finding the best routes and picking the hotel or the Airbnb or the apartment, the house, based on what do I have access to? Do I have access to a gym or is there a gym close by? Do I, can I run from my door and find a great trail? I know exactly where to go in Granada and exactly where to go in Chiang Mai for that. Is there a place where I can, I can do my long run and I can take care of my interval session? Are there races around if I want to be there for an extended period of time? Can I find the strength and depth of runner? Because usually it comes hand in hand. If you've got great running routes, there's going to be great runners. There's a village just south of where I live in Granada, which within one small village has 10, 15 athletes that, are, that have have ran under two hours 20 for the marathon, which is insane because the population of the village is about 2,000 people. So it's that strength and depth that made me a better athlete through living in, 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 in Granada. In Chiang Mai, it's a completely different approach to running, but running since 2000, 2010 has really taken off. So now it's, as soon as a, a marathon is published, it's sold out within minutes because of the demand that running now has in Southeast Asia. But that leads you on to the rest of South Asia and what's possible there. And then it just becomes a battle of, okay, when is it good to be there climate wise? When can I really push? When can I be outside? And exactly the same in, in Granada. You can live in Granada all year round. It's, for me, it's El Centro del Mundo, the, the center of the world when it comes to running. You've got mountains, you've got trails, you've got technical trails, you've got everything you can possibly think of, but it becomes slightly uncomfortable for cycling when you've got the wet winters and you cycle, you get cycle on your bike and you go out there with sort of $20 and um, enough calories therefore to stop at any bar or shop and, and be able to go all day. Once you add rain and cold mountain rain to that, then it becomes a different, it becomes a different experience when it comes to layering and when it comes to preparing for those rides. And if you're watching in the UK or the US and you've got to tough out those winters, it, it, it's great and it's all part of the game. But when you can easily swap that for Chiang Mai and go out with $5 in your back pocket and you've got a 7-Eleven or a little mom and pop store on every single corner, you've always got access to that, then it's very easy just to go out there and 
very often I, I just have five dollars my bicycle repair kit and I'm off and I'm gone and it's and it's brilliant and it's a brilliant experience but for me the travel and the variation in your year and in your training really splits up the year and really splits then up your cycle uh, really split, splits then up your racing and what you can then race so you know when I've got messages you know can you come and run in the Maldives immediately it's a yes because I've never done it before only think of the Maldives and think luxury hotels and blue waters it was much more when I got there running in Vietnam and running a marathon there I you know you just think of Vietnam from what you've seen but then going there and experiencing the culture and when you're running a marathon or a city race like a you know 10k or half marathon it's the best possible time to visit those cities because everyone there's runners from around the world but all the Vietnamese people were kind of open to conversation with runners how do you train what do your long runs look like where do you live from where do you come from and it's much easier to start conversations from pe with people that you would usually not be able to talk to so I think running and sport and cycling is the perfect way to to travel the world and yet yeah, you've got to think about safety and where you are and that might be very very different to where you're from and you know in the routes and maybe you're going to a place that you can go the, on the wrong path and you can be caught in the wrong situation but that's kind of all part of, uh, of running and finding the right paths and, and knowing what you're going into before you get there and it just takes a little bit of extra planning and, and careful preparation and you're able to do that safely but most of all you're able to do it in a fun way so this is Chiang Mai and just to zoom out this is where it lies in the middle or kind of yeah the middle of Southeast Asia and so when you go into it you know the places you will have heard of are Phuket, Krabi, Pattaya maybe, Bangkok Chiang Mai is gold you're in the mountains here, all the way around you is mountains. But this is the perfect example because you could pick the right city here, but then choose an apartment or a house in the wrong side of the city. And it can be a bit of a nightmare getting over to, to where you want to be running or where you want to be cycling. So let's just have a look at satellite and, and this is what I'm looking for. So forget all the blue spots, they're just places that I've been. Um, so this is the city. And it's, you know, four walls, two kilometer, two kilometer. It's a beautiful, like, historical city. But as you can see, all the green is to the west of the city. And so if you're over here, it's fine. You can find some places to train. There'll be tracks, etc. Schools have tracks. You're in the mountains here. And so my house, or little studio apartment, I'm talking like a tiny little apartment, was somewhere around here and meant that two kilometers to the start of the mountain, which is, a, I'll come to in a second, is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 kilometers uphill. And then also this area is all a university. So including the track here. So you've got access to five tracks in Chiang Mai. From here, I could do an easy run start, super easy warm up and get straight into the university and do all my running. Uh, easy runs, recovery runs, etc. And then when I'm doing a specific session, you can go north and go towards this. There's another track here. And then you've got another track here and stadium, another track. And that's the sports complex. If you look on Strava, it's pretty obvious. You know, all the stuff is on the west. And this is because all, so that's where all the trails are. So, yeah, people have run around around there but if you're looking at this is called canal road and then you're looking at the uphill so you'll get places all the way uphill and there'll be tracks and, and this is like for me perfect segment 10 kilometers at six percent and you can hammer it up there and get taxi down for five dollars or whatever or you know even less than that if there's a few of you in a taxi um so for me it's perfect to give you a stark contrast of a beautiful place you can go, but it's a nightmare for running and cycling. When I lived in Barcelona, this is zooming out on Barcelona. So you've got the natural park here. So you're thinking, oh, brilliant, you know, all I need to do is in the city and then I'll get the metro out and it's simple. 
not easy at all. This is this is Barcelona, and you know, as you can see, these are all. This is where I lived in the red, and these are all sort of now apartments were all built, uh, all big buildings, and as you can see, there's not so many parks. There's a park here near the beach, and then you've got Park Well, and then you've got up into Tibidabio or Montjuic on this side, but. If you notice, if I want to get on my bike here and go for a ride, if I want to go north, this direction, or south, or into the mountains, I've got to cross 10, 15, 20 traffic lights. Every single one of those blocks is a traffic light. And this is one way. So I'd have to go here and then go, ch -ch -ch -ch, and, you know, not easy at all. And so my runs would mean from here, and nice, easy run, down, stopping quite a lot for traffic, and then getting to Barceloneta and doing an out and back from the beach. So I'd get to round about here, and then 5K out, 5K back, and those would be my easy runs. And then if I wanted to do more specific stuff, the weekend, I'd need to hide bottles and stuff like that. Completely an amazing city, like probably the most fun city I've ever lived in in the world, but not ideal for cycling and not ideal for running. I'll show you another time the best place in the world to run and ride your bike pretty much all year round.